I'm Mark Dometto. And I'm Matt. And welcome back to Mindbreakers. Uh... Um. The brave little toaster goes to Mars. Oh, just ripping off the band aid, huh? Quick and easy, <laughs> just like that? Alright. Uh, God fucking damn it. 1998, not rated. Okay, I think we can assume G. I. I hope so. Except, I gotta say that that, that segment where, where where Lampy loses it, ties Toaster to a chair, and cuts off one of his ears to stuck in the middle with you. I wasn't expecting that to be. <laughs> to, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. Uh, it's five point seven out of ten. Seems high. <laughs> a little bit. Thomas M. Dish's sequel, based on the book sequel, has our hero zooming off to of all places Mars. That even, was a sentence. Even the synopsis, the little blurb, is confused. <laughs> so they're going to Mars. Why? I, I don't know. They just are. Like, we don't know. Alright, just watch the fucking movie. I don't care anymore. <laughs> they're going to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. Get, get, get your ass to Mars. We're really going to watch Toaster and other appliances go to Mars, aren't we? It has the cast back. Yay. For old Ravenscroft. Eric Lloyd, De- Deanne Oliver, Timothy Stack, Roger Cabler. They all came back, huh? Andy Miller's back as Ratso. Wayne. Great. No, we got Brian Doyle Murray's back as Wittgenstein. Oh, yay. Or is it Wittgenstein? That's the computer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We're not excited for this one, are we? No, we didn't like the last one. The last one was pain. We did not like the last one. So, shall we watch this one? Yeah, let's just get get the needle over with, you know what I mean? Now available to own on video cassette. Get ready to boldly go where no appliance has gone before. Ready for blast off? Ready! Disney invites you back with all your favorite friends in a brand new movie coming to video May 1998. We're about to be boosted into hyperspace! The Brave Little Toaster goes to Mars. Mars! It's the story of a daring rescue. It's up to us to see that no trouble comes to the little master. And this time, they'll have to make it home by breakfast. Are we there yet? Head it, boys. Discover the true meaning of friendship and loyalty with Lampy, Kirby, Radio, Blanky, and the brave one himself. The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, an all-new movie landing only on video. They go to Mars! They, the title did not lie. They, they do, in fact, go to Mars. Takes them a while, though. It did get solid 20 minutes, almost. Anymore? What? You know what surprises me? That they actually went to Mars? No, no, not really. But that it takes, like, 20... Like, it takes quite a while of screen time for them to actually get to Mars. Yeah. But that they technically go to Mars and back overnight. In less than a day? Yeah. Two, what is it, 248 million miles, give or take? I think it's a, a number that's, I think it's Zidgillion or something. And the ain't the fucking yeah, the fucking vacuum says it, I don't know. Uh, I think it's a calculator. I don't care who said it, it's stupid. <laughs> so, we, we start in, a, there's a house with a barn and it's Robbie's veterinary practice. So he actually has his veterinary practice that he was hey, getting. Hey, good for him, good for him. Um, they're all in the house. They're doing stuff. Microwave is talking shit. Yeah, he's he's Wayne Knight. Fuck yeah, he is. Which every every time the the he he talks shit about the the appliances, just want Lampy to say Newman. <laughs> I want to be Lampy because Lampy's my favorite. I like Lampy. <laughs> he's so tired of everyone's shit. So so is Radio. Oh yeah, Radio's had enough of people in this movie. Let me tell you. <laughs> 
So the, there's the microwave, there's the faucet. Play by Farrah faucet. <laughs> Can't make this shit up. Ratso's still there. Ratso is still there. I guess he's like the pet. Yeah, he's the pet of the... He can still talk to the appliances somehow. Does a faucet count as an appliance? I don't know. It had hair. As a, it it had washcloth. Yeah, but it was a towel. But it's still had hair. It, it had a son called Squirt. And that was its, its name? Just, yes. Oh. And it's just... Imagine Mrs. Potts and Chip from Beauty yeah, and the Beast that. with like 1% of the budget <laughs> and none of the talent. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, so... They're all... Guess, guess what they're doing. You'll they're never sing, believe it. They're dancing and singing. And they're waiting for masses. And they're, they're listening to the song... He likes bread and butter. And he likes toast. Of course, that, it's this song. Is that real? Yeah, it's a real song. It's okay. Actually, it's not bad. It's just, I'm surprised it took them till now. Fair, fair. Oh, because he's a toast. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not as quite as good as Rudy to it. Oh, Rudy. Rudy. Oh, um, that just unlocked memories in my mind. such a good Holy song. Shit. Such a good movie. <laughs> Rats was like, hey guys, you know there's been mu- music made since the 60s, right? And they're like, but we like this one. He's like, eh, all right, fine. fine. I'm not going to yell with a toaster, you know? I'm not going to argue with the toaster again. <laughs> yeah, again. <laughs> exactly. He knows. He- he's learned. And so the hearing aid starts singing. Yeah, there's a hearing aid. It lives in the drawer. And a calculator. No one likes the hearing aid. And, like, when you say no one, they mean, like, no one. He's played by a guy called Fiver Schwinkel. Sure. And he sound the, he said the the hearing aid sounds exactly like you'd expect someone called Fiver Schwinkel to say. <laughs> exactly. He really does. And he's uh, not in anything I've ever. Oh, he's I, a fancy island. I would say I I looked it up on IMDb last night and I didn't know anything that he was in. I don't think. He was in Nixon in 95. Ah. And he played a hearing aid. Yep. I think everyone in this movie is too good for this movie. (laughs) That's a good way of putting it. Robbie and Chris come home. If you weren't paying attention last movie, you would not know that his wife's name is Chris. Because they (laughs) never say it. No, they don't. And they have a baby. Yay. Called Robbie. Also Robbie. Yep. Of course. Of course. My favorite part is how the appliances look at the baby and they don't really know it's a baby. But then when the baby's like doing stuff, they're like, oh, I remember when the master was that young. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, how old are you, things? Like, I mean, I... It's 1998 now. Yeah. This is a toaster and the stuff presumably from the 50s. Yeah. And it's they all time still work. to replace them, dude. Yeah, but he can't. You let should go. be this emotionally invested in a freaking toaster. <laughs> you know, like a radio, I can kind of get. You know, a radio, a good lamp, but yeah, a good lamp, sure. But a toaster. The that I'm amazed can do two pieces of bread, by the way. Yeah. Uh, it's all weird. They have fun time with the baby, and then... There's an awful, awful song. Uh, don't eat yet. Yeah, no, we don't eat it. No. No, we can skip the song. And, and then, I guess it's amazing again? because apparently if these appliances... The, one, they're sentient around the baby. Yeah. Two... If they weren't around, it's made kind of clear that the kid would have died several times over? Yep. 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 This baby likes to explore. This baby likes to fall over. And, and fall over quite a bit. Like, Bl- Blanket's like his best friend, because... Well, obviously. Duh. Because <laughs> he baby. That, that whole plot point of Blanky being, like, being jealous and like, I wish they'd take it back to wherever it came from. Yeah, that's out the window, like, Based kind of immediately. Yeah. So, late one night, um, there's a transmission, and so the hearing aid's like, yeah, I got it. 
and then he's standing at the window and the baby comes to look and then the other appliances go and then a light comes from space and abducts the baby. <laughs> yeah, that's the plot. At night. And apparently it was by mistake. It was going to abduct the hearing aid. As you do, you know. So they, they track it with the help of a calculator. And Wittgenstein from the last movie. And they find <laughs> out the baby the baby's on Mars. And well, they say, we gotta go to Mars. So they gotta go to Mars. They gotta get the ass to Mars. They gotta get the Aston Mars. So they ask, all right, how do we get to Mars? And Wittgenstein's like, ah, it's easy. You're gonna need a laundry <laughs> basket, a ceiling fan, and microwave popcorn. Cheddar, Cheddar cheese flavor. specifically. And That's all you need. Hey, hey, what? How do you know how to you know how to get to Mars? Why didn't Why did no one go there? Oh, they never asked me. Like, well, you were a government, a computer, a supercomputer <laughs> built by the government, used by the government through the forties and fifties. They would have tried. They would have asked you. Yeah. So clearly, you can't do this. <laughs> uh, but they believe in the computer easily. They download full capacity to the calculator. Don't say those words. That's, I, <laughs> don't, I, don't, I don't like those words. <laughs> That's not how calculators... Calculators cannot receive data. Listen, there's going to be a lot of things in this movie where the appliances don't work like how the appliances should. 1940 supercomputers that run on punch cards cannot transmit data. Weren't they, like, chatting with him via computers? Yes. Uh, how? <laughs> Brain. <laughs> how did you connect... This is a Dr. Corner's computer. It cannot connect to the internet. <laughs> It needed light bulbs to turn on, for fuck's sakes. How? Wait, that's actually a problem with with the first, with the second one that I'm realizing now. <laughs> how how did the supercomputer yes. virus spread yes. to all the other computers if computers that old cannot interface with other computers? Why did he have the backup to the report that the kid was writing? <sighs> Sorry, I'm, no, we, we can't. My head's starting to hurt. I can't. <laughs> it's only gonna get worse. Uh, by a fucking miracle, by the way, this whole plan works. Yes, they they attach the ceiling fan to the laundry basket, plug it into a into the microwave for power because microwaves totally don't need electricity to freaking function. That's no, they're the power source. It's the other way around. Like rem- remember, what what that it was a plot point in the first one. That they had to bring the generator with them. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you throw that out the window. They got a they got a fucking microwave now. And remember in the first one how Lampy heroically sacrificed himself and almost kinda died. Throw that out the window too. Remember how the first one was actually kind of dark and serious in points. And I do. Got downright scary. Uh, yeah. With the demon clown. Didn't the fucking AC unit kill itself? Yeah. Now we're going to Mars. They they take the hearing aid as well and the calculator. Rats was like, hey guys, I don't want to come. And they're like, no, you can't breathe in space. No, idiot. You can't breathe up there. They're like, okay, fair, the rat can't breathe in space, but how are you expecting to get the kid back? We'll figure it out. Then Blanky wants to go because he's worried the kid would be cold, which, yeah. yeah. Fair. (laughs) Fair, but they're like, no, you're a baby. You can't go. Like he's like fuck you guys, and he goes yeah. anyway. Hasn't been like ten years. Yeah, he sounds older. I mean, he used to be the blanket for the master when he was a kid. Yes. Imagine, you, I don't know. He, he, I'm guessing he's been through some shit. Yeah, he's been through the last two movies. <laughs> True facts. So you they, have, you have to watch a bunch of cars singing about death. He sneaks onto the the laundry basket. Oh, by the way, this is all one night. <laughs> oh yeah, this all takes place on it, it, it's it's like a it's like a training day. It's all on the same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They somehow travel all the way to fucking Mars, they, not on a rocket ship. The, the the laundry basket works. They're flying. They meet a bunch of fucking balloons. Now, I, I'd like to point out that this laundry basket with a power with a ceiling fan powered by a 
microwave. <laughs> Pop also, popping plug, popcorn. That's also, important. Also, you plug the ceiling fan into the microwave. Is that like sex for the appliances? I don't know if it's an I don't know if it's an avatar situation here. Okay, I really don't. And this is probably the dumbest vehicle I've seen on this show. <laughs> and I, I give the gump from Return to Oz a pass <laughs> over this because hey, at least that was magic. <laughs> I that was just straight up magic. <laughs> so that's fine. <laughs> but this... Uh, yeah, this might be the dumbest mode of transportation we've seen on my breakers. I'm and more that mad that it works. Sir, Go- Sir Gawain being dragged by it from his horse. <laughs> by his own flail. <laughs> it's, it's sort of the valley. Oh, fuck. <laughs> They meet balloons. They meet balloons. They have a song. And it's not a bad song. It's, it's not bad. It's not like the baby song, which is just was like painfully sad. <laughs> yeah. But. It's trying to be worthless. And that's the thing. And that's is, the thing. It's, I mean, it's worthless, but not the way you mean. <laughs> They're all trying to give like their sap stories. And I'm like, man, I, ju- I don't care. And and there's one who's a hippie who was a Woodstock and he talks like Bob Dylan for some he reason. And he's the only balloon who's upside down and has a beard somehow. <laughs> the balloons are in space. I stop asking questions at this point. And their balloons never let go and I mean yeah, my question a... is that their balloons blown forever on the cosmic winds. Yeah. Yet, and they have one who sounds like Bob Dylan, but they don't reference that the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Nope, they all just sing a song and then fuck off. There's one who looks like the New Yorker mascot. <laughs> and there were, I think you might find out just how old these appliances are, because apparently he recognizes radio. From the World's Fair in 1938. Oh my god. Get get new appliances, kid. Seriously, man. You used a computer in the second one. You must know. There are better alternatives now. You never, we never throw anything away. That's how you, that's how you get on hoarders. <laughs> I was going to say, this doesn't sound like a good thing. This sounds like an upcoming plot to hoarders. <laughs> It's a very serious you're thing. You're bringing a child into this house. It's a very serious thing happening here. Get, get it fixed. Oh, uh, but yeah, they... I can't fucking believe it, but they made it to Mars. They get to Mars, and Blanky kind of uh, confirming their decision not to bring them along. <laughs> uh, I think the popcorn's done, opens the microwave, and everyone, including the Including the hearing aids, like, no, you fool. And they fall on Mars. Yeah. Because Blank, he's a, cause he, he turned off the engine. Yeah, he, he's a dumbass. Also, they say that they, they, they later say they only have enough they, popcorn for one more trip. Did they, did they seriously fly from Earth to Mars using only one bag of popcorn? So, here's the thing. Right. To to microwave a bag of popcorn usually takes about two minutes for the whole thing to pop. Yes. Now they didn't they leave it in the package. The, but they opened the bag. Yeah, they didn't open they they opened the package and just put the seeds in there. Which I would assume would make it happen much quicker. I don't think so. Because then the heat's not as compressed or Okay. Something. Sure, fair enough, fair enough. Fair enough. But does that mean they had to Oh my calculate? lord, why are we debating the size of fly to... No, 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 I just need to know if they calculated how many kernels they had. Because if they only got enough for two trips, I mean, they had to use half the bag. Or half of the kernels. No, they had only two bags. Oh, they had two. Yeah. Okay, that makes a little bit more sense. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Listen, we're about to talk to fucking fridges on Mars, okay? Yes. That built a rocket. I, I know it's way ahead, but... The so term of Mars, it, it just pisses me off. Ratso is in a in like a Star Trek style Gorn fight with the intercom. 
<laughs> he really fights this fucking thing so much. Also, we could perfectly imitate the sound of a human baby. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Live with it. I don't know. So they're on Mars. <laughs> yeah, I'm not over that fact either. It's okay. And they they meet some space capsules, some satellites that landed. Yeah. Including Viking One. Yeah. And it's like, oh, they they set me up, but I was apparently I wasn't actually supposed to ever come back. Which that's rough, they buddy. told me now I'm stuck on in space <laughs> that, with a that's Christmas a... ornament. Yeah. Why did that Christmas ornament get there? Because some kid put it on? Yeah. Okay. And Why they let a kid near she's the... She's played by Cass Susie. Because they couldn't when get... You, when you couldn't get Jennifer Hale, Tara Strong, yeah. or anyone else. She's <laughs> never seen a Christmas tree. Because... I don't duh, know she's how on a Mars. Christmas angel qualifies as an appliance. I, I, should a fucking Mars satellite count as an appliance? I don't know anymore. They can talk to animals. Who cares? True. Um, also, the, the, the hearing aid that he... Because he, he explains the, the traveling in space thing but earlier, and they're like, well, who's... Who's uh, hearing aid were you? Albert Einstein's? Yes. Like, Albert Einstein was never... was not deaf. He never had a hearing aid. Nope. He was dyslexic. Sure. But he was not deaf. Yeah, they just kind of throw stuff in this movie, like, I it's think. It's one thing to make up fake science. It's another thing to just flat out lie about actual people. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But it doesn't matter, because... Uh, they ask the question, hey... Oh, because they meet, they meet, they meet a, a blender, not a blender, a, a mixer, and a blender. Yeah. And like, hey, so they don't question on... how these things are on Mars. No. They're just like, yo, have seen you seen a... a human baby? Yeah, you've seen a human baby, and they're like... Oh, you mean the prisoner? With the what? what? <laughs> well, I mean, there's only one human on Mars, and he's our prisoner. Huh. So. Yeah, baby's prisoner. A bunch of squares with frickin' missile launches and Gatling guns and flags come up. Yeah. And the, the appliances are one of those. Like, our, our, our heroes are like, what are those? Those are the Wonderlux appliances. Military toasters. Mili- military toasters. Military toasters. Military toasters. There's also a rocket. Mm-hmm. With a face. Is the rocket sentient? Yeah, I don't I know. I think it's just like painted up like a shark. But why? But I also raised the question. If these appliances can build machines. One. Do those machines get sentient? <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how the fuck they made the rocket. Okay. Okay. They don't have hands. Where's my hands? <laughs> Where's my hands? But they, there's the rocket, and so they're taken to the other Wonderlux appliances, and their supreme commander, who is a gigantic fridge. Look, I know the more we talk about the plot, <laughs> the more insane we sound. And one one question, why they built a giant, because <laughs> we don't mean like it's a deep freeze. No, this thing is like, no, it's fucking huge. Stories tall. <laughs> it's just a big fridge. And there are flags flying, and they're like, we're going to launch our missile at Earth and destroy it. And the toaster asks the very, the, the first logical question that's been asked in this movie, which is why. Why? Why? <laughs> Apparently, um, it's because the Wonderlux appliances were built with planned obsolescence in mind. Yeah. Therefore, the human race has to die. Also, they yeah. escaped in a rocket somehow. Yeah, they built a rocket and they escaped. Somehow. Yeah. They they rebelled, and their way of rebelling was... To escape. To escape to Mars. One would question... One wonder... This brings up the very good point of... 
how was the loss of an entire factory of appliances explained? I'm assuming he blew up the factory afterwards, okay? No one cared who I was to like put on put the on <laughs> <laughs> this fucking this thing is so dumb. To- Toaster's like, hey, That's, you know, wait, you want to blow up the? The fridge <laughs> like, I'm going to blow up the Earth because it blocks my view of Venus. And they're like, hey, uh, maybe don't do that. Where's the kaboom? And there was supposed to be an Earth shattering kaboom. Yeah, uh, Toaster's like, hey, don't do that. Humans are cool. Which All right, like, we're gonna run for election. What? <laughs> yeah, there's an election every ten minutes. No, it's every day. That's every, there's, there's an election in 10 minutes. It's one every day because the Supreme yeah. Leader likes being validated. <laughs> I, all right. It's like, okay. Relatable. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I guess, yeah. The toaster runs up against a fridge. It's song. It's in song. Which it's is in funny because it's fire versus ice. Yeah. And the humans are, hum- the toaster like, humans are great. And the toasters, and the fridge is actually right. Yeah. But this assessment of humanity a little bit. I also gotta gotta take a moment to say that the stakes in the first one were pretty. It was to get back to the master, and then to save the master from being killed by a hydraulic press. Second one, no stakes at all. Yeah. Third one, the stakes with the destruction of the planet. Yeah. Oh, also the baby's in a bubble. Well, of course. How is it going to breathe? This movie. I don't know, man. <laughs> like, the more you think about it, the more it hurts. It hurts. <laughs> so they, they have their election song, and then the baby sticks his hand out. Oh, the blankie's in the bubble, too. Well, of course. He needs to be with his baby. And then the baby sticks his hand out of the bubble. Now, the it baby's hand should no longer fridge. be there. I just want to say it. Should the, the, hands, hang. Should the baby's hand explode? It should. That's as easy as that. It should no longer be there. Uh, but then, yeah, Fringe gets all warm and tingly inside, I think. It's like, hello. Oh. It's like, right. Then he says, oh, no, I hate humans. Yeah, he's like, no, nah, still, fuck you, man. I'm going to blow it up. So they have uh, the election. The, the, to- the toaster wins. And they say the line, the toaster is the supreme commander of Mars, and I'm just kind of, I was done before, but now I'm... But if there is one moment where you're done, it's there. Mm. Uh, also, like, the hearing aid was his running mate. Yes, because the hearing because... aid can explain space travel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. they go into the fridge... And they sail on an ice tray through a lake that's in the fridge. And then they come to an icy island upon which is another fridge. (laughs) Which which opens and an escalator comes out and a blue hearing aid comes down. Which is the other hearing aid's brother. Yeah, you heard that right. And he was left behind when, when Albert Einstein moved. And he got picked up by some other scientist who wanted to make bombs. I guess. I think he's the one who was in the the, the flashback with the Wonderlux appliances. Uh, he spent okay, so yeah, long yeah. hating humanity, and but now he he's happy to have a family again, and they're not going to blow up the Earth. And he's going to come back and live with them. As in their quest to make Robbie into a hoarder. Yeah. And then and they leave. And... But they're leaving. But oh no, they forgot to turn off the missile. Yeah. So the poster heroically goes to save the day. And then they land the ship to pick him up. But they have no more popcorn so they can't fly away. No, don't. Please don't write, Don't say it like that. <laughs> you could have just said fuel. <laughs> The ending of this movie is truly... It needs to be studied and, and analyzed in, in film school. And, but apparently the, the angel's wig is made of human hair. Nah. Nah. 
And like she puts her all her stuff in the microwave because it's organic. I didn't think you needed organic material. That was specifically popcorn. What is this thing power? I... And so they go back into space with the baby, and then they land on Earth, and this is all the same night. Still, yeah, still not morning yet. And then it's Chris. And then it's, they find the the Christmas the Christmas angel puts herself in the trash, which like, ouch! It's a happy ending all around. And then uh, when they're playing with the baby, baby picks up Angel. Chris, Chris finds yeah, baby finds Angel. Chris fixes her, and then it's Christmas. And then they wake up, and the baby's there. And then they go downstairs to open presents. The angel's on the Christmas tree, of course. His first word was toaster. Yeah, baby's first word was toaster. So then he brings in the toaster. Yes, you really should have your appliances, especially toasters, in places where babies cannot access them. Yeah. But then he doesn't just get the toaster. He gets all the, the vacuum and the lamp and the radio. The radio. And the blanket. blanket makes sense, I guess. But. Yeah, blanket, sure. Get, got that. <laughs> then the appliances are going to have their own Christmas party. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then they sing about Christmas. And then thankfully, the movie fucking ends. Is this a Christmas movie? I was going to ask you the same question, but I was too afraid. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> what the fuck did we watch? <laughs> Brave Little Toaster goes to Mars. Now, look. Granted, right? It's much better than the second one. Yes. that's Why well, was Farrah Fawcett here? Because it was funny. No, it wasn't. I I know it wasn't. But I don't think they did. Oh, this movie was stupid. It's just stupid. Why were there balloons? I don't know. I don't know. Why did they go to Mars? I don't know. Why are there fridges on Mars? <laughs> Why, Why are there, there military toasters? They left all the other appliances on Mars. <laughs> So the humans could have them when they get there. Oh my god, they did leave them on Mars. Yeah, they left all of them on Mars to fix themselves up. I, I did not even think about that. What the fuck? Yeah, this movie was awful. But it's awful in, like, such a comedic way. Like, I mean, it definitely didn't, wasn't animated as cheaply. Oh god one. no. The no, second no. one just looked awful. Yeah, this one at least tried. And none of the songs are quite as bad as Oh what a day to remember. I oh remember it just that way. And I forget to remember that day. Oh what a day to remember. It's bored into my brain. <laughs> oh, I hate that song. <laughs> Ugh. Yes, the Brave Little Toaster saga comes to an end. Thank God. He had nothing to do with this. He just, They just wanted to get the Master. That was the whole point of the first movie. And you know what? They did it. They, they got the Master. Did we need more? No. Especially ten years later? We're no. Talking Animals and Sebastian the Monkey and Tartarus Labs, Subtle. Oh my fucking God, the second one had a monkey. Hmm. And a snake called Morgenstu- Mor- Morgan Morgan Morgantrod Morgenstu- Morgantro- Morgatroid. The fact that you remembered that. Couldn't you just call it, you know, something? So why is the snake not an S name? I don't know. Then they throw this. Then the snake attacks the driver who's just doing his job. Yeah, I did. Ta- Watch the first one. Next, and then, next and then week. Pretend. Next week. We're going back to a series that's gone way, way, way too long. Oh no! About little things. Oh no! That are alive. Don't do it. And yeah, it's good to be done. Very little toaster. They flew to Mars in a laundry basket with a ceiling fan tied to the bottom, powered by Wayne Knight. 
<laughs> See, that's better. That's a lot better. What? That this is powered by Wayne Knight. Well, the fan's not... named Fanny, by the way, because of course it is. See, I didn't know what his name was, but like, I feel like I knew. You know what I mean? I mean, I just know there's someone in this a character called Fanny. <laughs> I'm just going to assume that's the fan. Fair enough. Played by Carol Channing. What? Oh, uh, this, was, this was a movie. Yeah, I argue it wasn't. <laughs> I, you know what? I think you can make a pretty convincing argument, too. Uh, I hit Steven Toblowski by mistake. It's okay. Is yes. it? This movie was bad. This movie... Yeah, no, it's just... It's bad. Like, it, again, it's not as worse as the second one. But, you know... Still not good. Anyway, that's good night for me. And it's good night, night from, for me. From him. I'm done. Yeah. I'm so fucking done with the shit. Ciao. Bye.